All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So glad to be back. Thank you very much for everyone who is welcoming me back. I had been out to Pakistan. I went on 23rd of February and I came back on this Friday, 17th of March. So this was for the first time in three years, a about 20 days long uh, absence. So thank you very much for putting up with that. And thank you also very much for being here. I see that the cool beans are already going strong and are here. And Skyfrog is saying, woohoo, thank you very much, Skyfrog. So um, in today's chat, I thought I'll give you an idea of what I did there in Pakistan, how is Pakistan, and the kind of foods there, and the events that I did. The I'll tell you the basic mission with which I went. And that was the creating some awareness about long COVID and vaccine injury. Even here in the US, many doctors are actually not able to connect these dots that this may be long COVID or this may be vaccine injury. Long COVID is still becoming a little more mainstream now. Vaccine injury is not at all. And then um, countries like Pakistan that follow US, they are still way behind. And so that is what my suspicion was. And my hope was that I'll go there and I'll do a tour of various colleges or whoever I'll sit down with, I'll discuss it and start creating awareness. So I think from that point of view, it was quite successful. The <laughs> Sometimes the situation used to be that I'll go to a college and the professors would say, we do not need to listen to Mubin because we are already senior to him and we are already aware of the things. And then they will put me in front of students. And then I'll do the talk. Students will then talk about my talk. And the next day I'll receive a message saying, hey, professors want you to deliver a session for them as well. So it was very interesting. And those messages are still arriving. Now there are requests to talk about long COVID or diabetes or vaccine injury over the Zoom calls. So in a way that that mission was uh, accomplished, although just for a few colleges, because I had a shorter period of time, the other mission was to eat a lot of <laughs> food and I gained a lot of weight as well. So I have to now stay quite, I have to fast a lot, a lot now. <laughs> so this is what was happening. Uh, Siddhartha says, welcome back. Thank you very much. Um, Alexander says, I'm an early adopter. I got long COVID before it was mainstream. <laughs> yes, sorry to, to know that. And very happy that you are recovering fast. Fast now. I know that you suffered for a long time. So I'm happy that you are recovering. M. Gregory says, welcome back. Alquin says, did you shake hands with Imran Khan? Did you get any fashion tips from him? So Imran Khan lives in Lahore as well. So the place where he lives has been very heavily busy with his party and the police. And um, so, no, I was not able to. We had to kind of coordinate our getting out of home according to the busyness and rush around his uh, house. So that was a crazy thing. Uh, this is how, um, I mean, it's a political side of the whole thing. Um, I have my opinion for why this is happening. So if, <laughs> if you would like to indulge me, I'll discuss that. So let me give you an idea of what I did there. Joel says, good to see you. Thank you very much. And good to see the cool beans here. I want to start with, Dan says, what about your awards? So I, I want to show you those. This is the one that I thought was the prettiest. 
And so I brought this one back with me as well. All other awards are in a in a trunk, in a bag, and they I left them because they were quite heavy to bring back. And they were all made up of glass, and so I thought they'll break. So I brought this one because this is a pretty unique. This is a piece of uh, wood. So they took a piece of wood and they they carved it. So this is actually carving. If you run your finger on it, you can feel the grooves of this thing. So this is actually a carved pattern. I do not know if it is hand drawn or it is machined, but it is a carving on it. So I really loved this one. So I brought this one with me. So the others <laughs> are there. So let me show you how it went. And before even that, I want to show you something. So again, staying true to my messaging. So this is drbean.com. And please, if you have not gotten your access to drbean.com, go to plans over here, get access, or look in the description of this video, and there is a discounted access as well. I wanted to start from here. I'm going to share this link in the chat. So this is on FLCCC. This video is actually on Odyssey. So before going, I had already recorded four or five lectures for FLCCC. And this is one of them, sleep and brain health. Especially those who have long COVID and neurological symptoms or vaccine injury and neurological symptoms, my request is for them to watch this video. Um, 16 minutes long, so not a very long video, but if I kind of give you some glimpses of it, this uh, I had done a lot of care in drawing this system because glymphatic system, as much as it is important to understand, even medical doctors and nurses and professionals and students are not able to grasp it because of the, number one, a more recent uh, discovery of it, 2012, by a Danish scientist, and number two, by the complexity of the way it is structured. And so I've tried to make these uh, illustrations to kind of explain how this works. And then what is the relationship to sleep? So my request is that please watch this video. Give me your 16, 20 minutes for this one. I think you will not regret it. So this is one back here. This is Dr. Bean. Now I'm going to give you an idea of where I was. So this is U.S., Right, so I am here in in California, near San Jose in San Francisco. So from here, my plane went. It went over this uh, snowy patch. I do not know exactly what, but eventually, we ended up here. This is Pakistan. Some part of this is disputed with India, and then here is Lahore. This is where I was born, and this is where I usually go to. So before I show you the pictures and foods, the, the travel that I did was from Lahore <coughs> to this area, which is Kashmir. So from Lahore, from here to Kashmir, and I spoke there. Then I came by, back to Lahore. Then from Lahore, I went to Shekhupura, then Faisalabad, that is this city over here. Let me reduce the size so that some of the... So from Lahore to Faisalabad, then Faisalabad to Sargoda. I spoke at Faisalabad as well. Sargoda, I met a bunch of students. Then came back to Lahore. Then I went to Multan, and I had some meetings with the students there. In the meantime, I had meetings in Lahore as well. So this time, majority of my activity was within this circle. And if, if you see here, Pakistan is larger than that. I didn't just have time to go to other places too. There were many who wanted me to come over. 
it was interesting. It has always been this way. Medical professionals push back on my teaching. Students want the teaching. And once the students know more than the professionals, then professionals say, hey, how about us as well? Okay, so with this, now I'm going to show you some pictures of, so this is on my way from Lahore to Islamabad. So that is towards that Kashmir side. So Pakistan has, I just, um, let me bring it back once more. Pakistan map. So if I bring it here, Pakistan has uh, all kind of terrain. So if you look at, this is Pakistan. So this side, the Karachi and Gwadar, this side has ocean with it. Then this area, the Balochistan, has a lot of mountains. Then this, this area, Multan, Sakhar, Rahim Yar Khan, Lahore, this is all agricultural and green. Pakistan is one of the world's best silk, cotton, and um, what else? Uh, grain producers, including the wheat and rice. Pakistan's rice are actually really, really popular, basmati. But because of the bias for Pakistan or against Pakistan, many times if it is written, uh, produced in Pakistan, people don't buy it. So what happens is there are companies who are India-based companies or other countries' companies. They are based in Dubai. So they buy Pakistan's products, bring them to Dubai, repackage them and say that packaged in Dubai and kind of obfuscate the name for Pakistan. And then they send them to US and other markets. So um, this is all green. Then these sides, northern sides are all <coughs> mountainous, including K2 or Mount Everest and so, which are one of the world's top or highest mountains. K2 is the second highest and so on. So it has all kind of terrains. So this is becoming mountainous as we go towards um, Kashmir and Islamabad. So this is also mountainous. I was going in this car and here is the, the mountains. This is another picture. So the, these are motorways. It is very interesting for me to observe that when Pakistanis are driving on the motorway, they are so disciplined with their driving. They drive within the lanes. They would give indicators to move over from the lanes, there is an interesting behavior which kind of confused me in the beginning. And that is when somebody is in the rightmost lane, which is the fast lane, Pakistan is the, I think, left hand drive. So somebody is on, in this lane, and if you are behind them and you're expecting them to give way, and if they cannot give you way because there is another car in front of them or they cannot, they're fast enough not to be able to move right away, they'll give an indicator on of the right side. So I became very confused in the beginning that why will someone who is already in the extreme right indicate to go further right because there is this barrier on the right. And then the driver told me that this simply means they cannot move over. They're not going to go to the left and wait for them. So <laughs> that was quite a discipline over there. I think Yes, so that is also true, Joy. The Himalayan salt, even those lamps and stuff, they all come from Pakistan because Pakistan has world's largest salt mines. And once again, to scrub the name from Pakistan, they just call it Himalayan salt. So correct, those pinkish salt, you know, big chunks of salt and the lamps are from Pakistan. So then, Kini, that is correct. Let me open the door. I think Kairi wants to come in. One second. So that was funny for me 
to observe that if they are in the extreme right lane, they would further give a right indicator just to say that, hey, we can, I cannot move to the left. I'm going to stay in the right. This is uh, Pakistan's Lahore's airport, Allama Iqbal Airport. This is once again, as you can see, the mountains. So this is now we are going more deeper towards the mountainous areas. And then, okay, so this one was actually a later. This was an event in Lahore where there is a student's organization called Humanity Still Exists. What they do is they are all medical students and they collect um, funds or donations and then they go and help the poor families. For example, nowadays Ramadan is coming in. So they are doing a drive to collect rice and, and co uh, wheat and other things and they'll give them for free to deserving families. Okay, so I want to show you. Let me go here for a second. Okay, so this one. So back to the going towards Kashmir. So this is Kashmir. And uh, as you know, that parts of Kashmir, Kashmir are disputed. Of course, if you ask India, they'll say there's no dispute. It is ours. If you ask Pakistan, they'll say part is ours and the rest is disputed. So without going in that politics, for me, for the first time I saw this, that these, uh, these mountains on the other side is India. And on this side is Pakistan. So, for example, the person, our professor who was driving me around, he told me here that, hey, the top of these mountains are actually India. And then as you come down the mountains, this is Pakistan. So they are really very, very close. So other side of the mountain is India. This side of the mountain is Pakistan. It, it was like that. And if you see here, this is also, once again, the these mountains, parts that are covered in clouds, they were in India. And the these ones that you see on this side were in Pakistan. Then this is a river. So there were a couple of rivers there that come and they combine together. I think one of them is called River Neelam. Neelam means, I believe, blue <laughs> it has blue waters and then there is another river called um jhelum and then they both uh, they both merge together and this one is very interesting picture so the driver who was driving me around he was trying that do you see this little dog behind me so the driver was trying that i stand somewhere where the dog will not stand and wherever I'll go, it's a stray dog. She would just come and stand next to me. And the driver kept trying to shoo her away. And I said, please don't shoo her away. Let her be in the picture. And um, this allows me to share something with you. A little younger Mubin, my mission or the thing that I used to think that my mission will be, was to offer a sanctuary for the stray animals in Pakistan. They're not treated very well. People look at these little dogs and they pick up stones and they hit them. Or if you look at cats, they're not in a very good state. Or even if the, um, the animals that are used for carriages, for example, horses or donkeys, some of these are not treated well. So I used to think that I'm going to make a big place where I'll take all of these animals and I'll go and I'll bring them there and I'll take care of them. So the driver wanted me to be away from this little dog and I just wanted her to be to be there. That's fine. So driver would say, hey, go stand there. And the dog will walk with me over there as well. That was so funny. So still the same place. This was a castle where the in the older times the raja or the king of this territory used to live in this castle this is the river and look at the i mean you have to be present there in person to actually appreciate the scale of these 
mountains and the heights of them. In this picture, they'd look like not much. But if you're present there, you'll be amazed at the majestic scene and how large these mountains are. So this was a restaurant in which we were, we went to eat. The restaurant was built right next to the water's edge. And so there were parts of the water that would go in the restaurant and they would pass through the restaurant. And so you could wash your hands or you could wash your feet while present there. It was too cold for me. I did not want to do anything. <laughs> this is also, so now in the Kashmir Medical College, I presented, and that is where I got this award as well. So this was on the roof of the medical college, and this is the Kashmir Valley uh, around it. For example, here as well. So this was various, this was a valley. So I was taking pictures of various sides of the valley. This as well. So I was standing on the roof of the college. This is the principal of the college. So on the way back when we had delivered the lecture and then we were coming back, um, he stood at a place and he, on the mountain and he said, from here you can see almost all of Kashmir Valley. So we took a picture from there. So... Um, Kairi is standing or sitting in front of the comments, so I cannot actually see the comments. I'm going to move this a little. Um, M. Gregory says, I wish I could smell the fresh air by the water. You are so uh, correct in this. The water and the, the, uh, the birds chirping and the freshness and then the uh, plants they all created an, an atmosphere that I had never seen before. It was beautiful. Correct. So that dog, poor thing, would just keep standing next to me. And um, I really... There were two main missions I wanted to have. And you know that nowadays my mission has become COVID. <coughs> Excuse me, COVID, long COVID, vaccine injury, awareness for them, figuring out what are the um, pathologies, what are the possible management protocols. My other mission used to be that in Pakistan, the transportation of construction material is still done on in a very unsafe way. So if I can, let me show you how they transport. So So let me bring something over. This was something that was also um so if you see here this is a tractor and a trolley behind this and what happens is as you can see these uh, bricks are loaded on it. Similarly Trolleys have, you know, those uh, iron bars that are used in building the buildings. Those long iron bars are also loaded on these and usually they are poking or protruding from the back. And many times youngsters, motor vehicle accidents, youngsters are the victims in all countries more often than other age groups. But in Pakistan, they get pierced by those um those bars because there is no legislation to say you should have a light on it to indicate that the, the bar is 
protruding. So sometimes youngsters don't even know that there are bars and it's dark and they just go and collide with them and the bars pass through their body and they just die. So I wanted to see if I could influence the Pakistani system to have either these iron bars moved in a protected container or have lights and stuff like that. So I had those kind of uh, things that I thought I'll do. But COVID changed a bunch of this. And so now long COVID and vaccine injury is one of the things. So with this, <laughs> so uh, Mary saying armchair traveling to Pakistan. Yes, so please stay and let's do more. So then this was on the way back from there as we were coming back. This was the medical students group that was present when I was teaching um, long COVID and vaccine injury. Here is the principal of the college, some professors with him, and here I am, and the rest are medical students. It is interesting, I'll tell you a funny thing. If you see here, girls are more than the boys. So in 19... 88, I believe, when 88 or 89, not even that, I think 90 or after, my session, my session before my session, there used to be a quota for girls' seats. So, for example, in every class, there would be 40 girls and then open merit for boys. So, there'll be 200 boys and there'll be 40 girls. When it was our session, the girls went to high court and they, they sued the government to say that government is being biased towards us. It should be open merit. So I remember our class was the first class where there were only 60 boys and then there were 180 or 160 girls because they were able to get much more better marks. So I was laughing and I was telling these students as well that if you see here, Girls are the majority, and here is a tiny group of boys in the class. So that is the case nowadays, that you see a larger number of girls becoming doctors and a smaller number of boys, because the merit is open and girls get better marks than boys. So then, This is when I was presented with this award that I just showed you. This is that award. I really loved it. As you can tell, I have it here with me as well. This is when I was speaking. One of the things that I have is that I cannot stand and talk. I have to move about. So first they allowed me to stand and talk here, but then I became bored very soon. Then they gave me a lapel pin mic and then I walked around the, the room and taught. Here are some more awards that I just left there because they were heavy and I could not <laughs> put them in boxes and bring them with me. There are a bunch of awards already here. This and this and that area is already filled with them. So I just left them. Now this is also a funny story. Uh, here in this picture this uh, woman here, she is my wife's first cousin, which I did not know. So they're also in Kashmir. And after I went to Kashmir, I found out that they are there are our, our relatives that live there. And so we found out her name is Bilkis. She is my wife's cousin. And here is the this is Professor of Internal Medicine and Head, head of Department in, in uh, Kashmir Medical College, Dr. Khalid Awan. He is said to be the richest and most successful doctor of Kashmir. And what they did was they literally, they literally cooked 12 or 13 things and you can tell that I'm the just one person over here. So what they would do is they'll keep putting food in my plate and 
keep saying, you got to try this, you got to try this. And I was dying with eating so much. There was this fish here, there were rice there, there were things called Kashmiri foods called gushtaba. You can see half eggs over here, the salad. There was a lot, there were a lot of things. So this is where, <laughs> this is where I started becoming fat <laughs> or in more decent terms, started putting on weight. So then I came back to Pakistan and then there were student organizations who will come and meet me. Uh, they'll discuss, uh, the students have a similar kind of uh, set of issues that are everywhere. How do I remember better? How do I recall better? I study well, but I still feel I cannot handle patients very well. How do I figure out what is the right way to diagnose and manage? Then some of them would say, should we go to US or should we go to UK or Australia or Canada or, or work within the U country? So such organizations and the students would come sit down with me and then on the way out, they'll ask me for autographs. So this is uh, me. There was a list of, there was a line of students and they'll come with their little papers and they'll ask me to give them autographs. So that is what was happening. I hope you are <laughs> with me. <laughs> yes. Yes, these were TED Talks. So then, then I came back and I went out for shopping for my family. So these are the kind of, uh, uh, you know, shalwar kameez as we call them. So if you go to something called J dot J dot clothes. Let me see if I can find them. So this is the clothing line called J dot. And um, they're supposed to be, I do not know how to navigate this, but they are very stylish clothes. So I bought some clothes for myself, my wife, and two sons. And so this is that clothing. Then uh, this is the way out. So the, my these pictures have become a little mixed up. But anyways, these were... This was actually a restaurant. Can you imagine that this was a restaurant, this huge, tall building and structure? So some more foods. This is my in-laws. They had invited me. And this is also a traditional breakfast. It is called halwa puri breakfast. So what this is, is this is a, a chutney. Then here is some, you know, chickpeas. These are cooked chickpeas. And here is cooked potatoes and uh, eggs. And these, this one is called a puri. This is made up of, um, I do not know what kind of uh, wheat it is. It's not wheat, it is, I don't know, something else. But it's kind of a very fun little pancake. And then you eat it with these guys. And in addition to that, you can see here, these things. So this is a meat pocket. So inside is the ground meat. And then you close this pocket and you fry this. And these are, if you see in here, this whitish thing, these have cream in them. So there is cream fried pocket. There is meat fried pocket. There is this pancake called a puri. And then you eat it with these things. So this is quite, quite fattening <laughs> and, and heavy. Yes. So... Mean Bean says hot pockets, kind of hot pockets, one with the ground meat, one with the cream, and um, really, really. <laughs> Sky Frog says that is breakfast. Correct, that is breakfast. And, <coughs> excuse me, it was a little lesser because usually this bre breakfast is also accompanied by Nihari, which is beef stew. 
and kulcha which is a non like thing so those were missing if you can see here in this little hot pot there were kulchas but there was no nihari nihari i had it the next day so this was the food then my team members he is umair he is one of the team members who work on the dr bean's tech part so he came to visit uh, i was at my in-laws place so he came and visited there you can see the kitchen from here and if you see the constructions are very similar to here in the us the only difference is that houses or buildings are not made of wood they are made up of bricks even simple houses are made up of bricks so if you see here this is the stove and this is the what is that thing called hood over there and this is a bubbler you can probably see a tiny bit of the bubbler bottle here in the bubbler and the floors are marble floors this is actually an apartment so umair was over to meet me this is now then the next day the travel started again <laughs> and i started going to faisalabad and sagoda and and multan so this was the other motorway and then this is very interesting i had not eaten this food before in my life this is a blochi food so blochi food is if i go back to pakistan map and go to let's say a map so if i bring this map over here this area this orangish area is called blochistan i had never eaten the food that is blochi food i had eaten punjabi food i am a punjabi as well i ate for the first time some kashmiri food this time especially gushtaba was a kind of a food which are like meatballs that was for the first time i ate and this is the blochi food that i'm going to show you this was also first time in my life that i ate blochi food so here is their naan bread so if you see here the naan bread is kind of elongated and then this is ribs so what they do is they bring in the ribs and they cover them in this tin foil and then they bake them so they become really soft and kind of have fats around them so you take that naan and you take pieces of this uh, this um, ribs and you eat them this was also another this is called i believe this is called sajji so what this is is there is this basmati rice which are cooked in the soup from meat so you first you make meat soup then you cook the rice in that meat soup and then you cook these vegetables and these little um pistachios and almonds and you put them there and then on top of this this is also ribs and parts of the meat which are just kind of so tender that they're falling off so you can just take a bite and it would give you this uh, meat and the rice together and it is a huge platter so you could have four people sit around this and eat <laughs> sky frog says i'm getting fat looking at it uh tiff says it looked like a banana what did it taste like so uh, are you talking about this one this is actually a naan it's just it looks like elongated thing but it is a naan so it tastes like a naan naan so mary says this is riveting yeah it is fun i just had dinner <laughs> getting hungry again yes so uh this was ribs these were meat with the um with soup cooked rice then so this was a friend of mine then he brought me in the evening to a place where his friends were sitting so in pakistan the people who are rich are very rich and uh, people who are not rich are not rich so the rich people for example when i went to this place there were um 
quite influential people, uh, ministers and folks like that, who I had no clue. And he didn't tell me who are they. He only told me afterwards. So I actually didn't care who they were. I didn't know who they were. So we went in and we had shisha, they call it. I had actually never in my life uh, puffed on a hookah or a shisha. So this is what they had. There were four or five people sitting there and talking and they were just being fun. And the one of the servants ran and brought me this kind of a little thing as well. I have actually never puffed on these things, but they said it won't be too hard. So what you do is you take this nozzle and there is tobacco on the top here. So when you suck at it, the tobacco's the uh, smoke goes all the way down in this little structure and there is water here in the bottom. So it goes and gets mixed with the water and kind of gets a little filtered. And then whatever is then emerges from there is what goes into your lungs. So Jeril says, did you try smoking it just once? No, I actually, for the whole time, I think we sat down there for a couple of hours. I kept smoking this hookah for the whole two hours. <laughs> it was so much fun. Or shisha, as they call it. And during that time, the other folks who were sitting there, they, was, they were asking me about, hey, I have diabetes. What do I do? I have this. What do I do? So it was more of a medical consultation while the doctor himself was puffing at shisha. But that was about it. I didn't go for the shisha again. <laughs> Sita says, so you are a tourist at home. Correct. <laughs> Blue Lover says, Dr. Bean and the bong. Is this the bong? If it is the bong, then yes. Uh, so Mean Bean says, did you get buzzed? So I had told them, I said, do not give me something that would be, um, you know, addicting or have something in it. So they said, okay, so we will not give you hard. We'll give you light. So whatever that meant, but it didn't, didn't do anything to me. So, <laughs> and you said smoke a hookah, correct. Hookah or shisha, they call it. <laughs> I'm Gregory Six. <laughs> I tried hookah once and I don't remember much. So the thing is, they were smoking this and the whole room was filled with smoke. It was the first ever time of me experiencing experiencing that thing. The whole room was filled with smoke. Everyone was just talking about things and they were eating food. And they were just, uh, when they found out I'm a doctor, they started asking me questions. Once we were done, then uh, the host who took me there, my friend, he said, there was this minister there and this was, there was that minister there. So there were people who were influential sitting there and having fun. <laughs> Uh, Jasnir says it's shisha hashish. So maybe it comes from hashish. Shisha means glass in in our language. Uh, so it had little cubes of tobacco on it. So so Ruby, I went to various colleges, but this one I got from Kashmir Medical College. Then I went to. <laughs> Health Institute of Faisalabad and then some organizations in other cities. So uh, this was funny. I actually did not feel much, but they had said that they're going to give me something light. So then that was done. This is again the same place for the clothes, J dot. And uh, this was, I was trying to buy something for my sons. These are the clothings that are for men. So this long, do you know that these, uh, this shalwar kameez, so this thing is called a kameez or a shirt. And then this shalwar is kind of like a trouser. This kameez was actually designed by the Queen of England for Pakistanis when Pakistanis were being ruled by Britain. So it's actually not a traditional dress. It was actually created by 
British uh, ruling people. So then I went to where I lived, the apartment. This was a new shopping mall that was being constructed there. So as you can see, the constructions are very much like um, Western constructions now. And where was I? One second. This was the town itself in which these malls were. So it is actually very interesting that the newer towns that they are building, there are multiple lane roads. And then in the center, they have this little structure where they have trees and, and little shrubs or whatever these bushes and that is how they develop them this is so when i started going to multan which was on the other side this was the motorway towards multan so the whole pakistan now has this uh, infrastructure of motorways where um, these are the kind of roads that you see and I, what I loved was, if you see, these are hazy. So I used to wake up right in the morning, 4 or 5, and then by before even sunrise, we'll be on the road. So you'd see that the roads are empty because I'll just start traveling very early. But the other thing is, because Pakistan is very agricultural and green, the, the plants and the trees would have this haze on them, the moisture. And so this this used to look really beautiful. And as the sun would start rising, you would see those shine of the sun coming through the moisture and haze. Primer says that I saw a lot of awards. Yes, I've been uh, <laughs> presenting. Pete says, not seen a motorway like that since the first days of April in 2020. Yeah, so, so this is very good. So Rand says, uh, in what language did you lecture? In English. So maj majority of the medical students understand, read, write English as good as you can. I mean, I am here in the U.S. for 21 years. I still have my accent. I still have grammatical issues. So imagine somebody who has not been in the U.S. for 21 years. They would have a little more, but still English. It is just easier that in various, uh, just to kind of create an accent or texture of the discussion, I would speak sometimes in Urdu or add Punjabi in it. So that was just to create a texture, but the primary messaging was in English. Yes, Dr. Iqbal says, it's amazing to know that kurta and pajama is designed by British Queen. Yes, so they made it for Pakistanis to wear because of considering the temperature of the country or the heat. Okay, so this was the motorway, then this was the motorway, this was motorway towards Faisalabad. So on the motorway at one point, I actually stopped. So if you see here, this is the guardrail. And then if you go down from here, there is one more uh, fence that separates the people's place from the motorway. So the animals and people do not cross. So if you go down there, I was standing next to the fence and I was taking pictures. So this is how majority of Pakistan looks, uh, a green agricultural land with lots of crops and mostly wheat crops, then rice, mangoes farms or mango trees, and then other such trees, uh, grapes, and so on. I also found out that this city where I was going towards, Faisalabad, Faisalabad <coughs> produces world's best toads, you know, the toad, the, the frogs, big frogs, and the the legs of these toads are a delicacy in Paris. So these toads are actually exported to Paris where the legs are eaten. I did not know this. <laughs> so 
So this was also on the motorway. Actually, the same place. This one, if you turn slightly towards left, then you would see this uh, cluster of trees. And I thought it will make a great painting. So I took a picture. This is also motorway. So here you can see that the motorway was kind of dividing in two parts. One was going towards the city. The other part was just going straight. And these were the containers. So this is motorway. This was, so once I reached Faisalabad, where I also presented, this was the breakfast there. So this was also another traditional breakfast. So if you see here, this is what we say paya. So these are the goat's uh, legs. So these are paya. These are traditional um, traditional breakfast in which there is legs or head or brain or tongue of the goat. But not many people eat brain or tongue. So usually just the legs. And then next to it is the chickpeas with the, <coughs> excuse me, eggs in it. Then next to that is the beef stew. And then this was an orange juice. This was lassi. Lassi is a, a very interesting, uh, what is that? Interesting uh, juice to, <laughs> juice or, or something to drink. What it is, is it is milk with, uh, with yogurt and uh, sugar and water. And if you drink lassi, you become really sleepy afterwards. It makes you all drowsy. So people on the weekends when they want to sleep, in the morning they have this heavy breakfast with lassi and then they sleep for the rest of the day. So this was the breakfast. This is pickle. These were, um, you know, this the peppers and lemons. This was raita. So this was the breakfast in the morning in Faisalabad. Then this was the evening in Faisalabad. So once again, it is a an agricultural area. So here, and this is true, JH says, maybe sleepy from the sugar. Yeah, so there are both kind of lassi, sweet lassi or, uh, or salty lassi. Most of the... Um, most of the people who live in cities, they like sweet lassi. And most of the people who live in rural areas, they like salty lassi. And so this was the evening in Faisalabad. And if you see here, these are grapes and the grape farms and then other trees. What was this? Um, who made this? Okay, so this was Sargoda. So the next city from Faisalabad was Sargoda. So over there, this is actually my sister-in-law. So my wife's sister, she invited me. And so she also had this very elaborate dinner, fish. And this is um, biryani, but a, a special kind of biryani. It is not seen here in the Western countries. So these big little blobs that you can see, these guys, these are actually meatballs. So these are, this is basmati rice cooked in uh, meat soup. And then underneath you put a layer of meatballs and then you put the rice on it. And then you put a bowl on it to give them this shape. And then once you've given the shape, you put a lemon on it. So this was a delicacy there. With, I'm becoming hungry just seeing this all, with the bunch of, various kind of uh, curries and and foods, meats and other things. And the one traditional thing is that if you go to some place and they have this huge number of foods, if you don't eat them all, they think that you didn't like it and they become upset. So you really have to kind of ration yourself. You cannot just take a big plate of rice and then they would feed you everything else as well. So you really have to take tiny bits of everything. So Tamara says, is lassi fermented or just mixed with yogurt? So yogurt is mixed. It actually looks, feels like 
fermented or you know you drink something and you become all disoriented <laughs> but it's yogurt and milk and water with salt or sugar <laughs> sky frog says my stomach is grumbling i didn't eat this all in one day it was like over the time donald says that you have a great eye for landscape inspiration for your painting thank you very much i actually kept a bunch of uh, pictures from here because they were just too many but just to give you a quick look once i can see them i'll show you so i had actually hundreds of pictures i just brought out some select pictures to share with you then this is my favorite dessert this is called firni so firni as you can see from the scale of this spoon it's not a very big um um plate and this is actually an earthenware plate it is made up of earth or or mud and then it is cleaned and polished and then in that this is a very finely very finely um ground rice with sugar that's it it is rice and sugar and some milk and then on top of it there is this uh, these almonds and uh, coconut and other things this is so tasty this has been my weakness uh, from my young age and what we used to do was we'll we'll buy the firni we'll eat it and then these little plates we'll use little um what are these the screwdrivers to make holes in them and then we'll put little threads in them and then we'll make little uh you know the the wings what are these the scales with them so we'll have two of them and we'll hang them on a stick and that will make a scale and we'll play with them so i love firni this is where i was staying right in front of that place was this new building being formed the one discipline in the city that was not good was if you see here people would just throw trash out of their car's window and that would accumulate so interestingly this time they were in the morning they would come trucks that would kind of have those little um you know cleaning brushes with them and the water so they would clean them and then they will wash the road but people would still not be very disciplined about not making the roads dirty this was so <coughs> in the center of the city lahore is the canal so this is a can canal that passes through this my whole life we used to be on this sides of canal on one side or the other traveling so what happens is so there is a um, department called punjab horticulture and something department so their job is that when the spring comes they would put various floats in the canal and they'll put these uh, um, lights on the trees and they'll put lights on the boats and put them in the canal so they'll create a little festival and so as you travel uh, on the side of the canal you'd see that whole festival going on then i went to my mother's grave so this is her grave and i went there and i prayed for her and then this is <clears throat> one of my uh class fellows so he was my class fellow his name is dr amjad ikbal he was my class fellow in 12th grade 11th and 12th grade college then he went to ulama ikbal medical college which was the second best in the in pakistan and i went to king edward king edward which was the top best so he actually ended up in ulama ikbal just with the merit of a couple of marks so he then went to britain did uh, radiology over there then came back and became pakistan's top radiologist so now he has a posh office and a very cozy life 
and um, he practices radiology there. He's one of the best radiologists in Pakistan. Tiff says, are they going to have 15 minutes smart cities there restricting yours and everyone's movements, not allowing you out the 15 minute zones? I'm not sure. I did. <coughs> Apologies. Uh, since I was in Pakistan, I had that dust that did this. And since I've been back, the Poland here is also doing the same thing. So I have cough. Um, Tiff, I'm not sure. <laughs> Lord says, can we make a recipe book, please? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Sigrid says, like wind chimes. Uh, which one was that picture? Like the scales. We used to make, you know, the wing scale. So like this. So if I bring in here, so see these scales. So we used to make them. So we'll take these two plates and we will we will thread the plates to make this kind of a thing. And then we'll have a stick on which we will put them. And in the center of the stick, we'll also put a thread. So now we'll have a scale and we'll play with that scale. That's what we used to do with the Firnese plates. So this is Amjad Iqbal in his office. Now, Amjad took me to a place in right in front of my college, King Edward Medical College. And he was surprised that when I was studying in King Edward, I had not eaten this. This is called patura. So patura <coughs> is a little more thick than puri, plus it is made of uh, wheat. And kind of it is a thick pancake and it is eaten with cooked chickpeas and pickle. And this is such a delicacy. And he was very surprised that uh, I had never um, eaten a patura from King Edward. So I told him that I had actually never come to that place in King Edward. I used to go to the other side where there used to be biryani and uh, puri and naan. But this place I saw for the first time and they were paturas, which were very good. So we are, So do you see, this is the total size of this place. So this is Amjad and this is me and these are paturas and we just sat down there and we ate paturas. I was sure I'm going to get sick because this was not a very clean place, but somehow I did not become sick. Pete says, look like a paratha. Correct. So all of these are pancakes, but this one is not cooked like a paratha. And it has, if you see in the ingredients, if I go back, this, this, do you see those little specks of stuff? It's, it, this has so strange ingredients. So if you hold it in your hand, it is very textury. And if you break it, it breaks. If you see here, it, it kind of breaks in a jagged way. It breaks where those specks of various grains are present. So it's a very interesting thing. Rand, very, very correct. My wife needs to make me a Jwan tea. My cough is, it needs help. <laughs> so Mean Bean says, Pakistan is done with COVID. Yes, so there was no concept of COVID or masks or anything. They are all majority vaccinated, mostly Chinese vaccines, then Pfizer vaccine. And there is no concept of COVID. <coughs> They're all going about doing their business, youngs or, or old. <coughs> Excuse me, when I'll come out with my family members, nobody ever said, we have to be careful outside. There can be COVID outside. There's, there was nothing like that. It was just everybody doing their own stuff. There was no talk of COVID or no care concern about COVID. So once we had this patura, then Amjad took me to a sweets shop, although I did not eat any of this, but these were also some really 
um, good sweets. So what he did was he made a couple of boxes of them. I brought one box back and my family, I gave it to them to eat. I didn't. I was already getting so uh, <laughs> full with foods. This is what I loved. So when I used to be in King Edward, we used to go, <coughs> excuse me, and eat samosas. So these are samosas. So what you do is, let me show you how we eat them. So what you do is, do you see this is a samosa? So you break a samosa in a plate and then you put chickpeas and sweet sauce and this thing is what you eat. It is so tasty. You cannot imagine how tasty it is. So we went and we had samosas. We did everything that uh, we used to do when we were, you know, young medical students. And so this is another, this is called peony. Peony are little noodles that are, put together in the form of a pancake. I actually brought them with me as well. So <clears throat> what you do is you make tea and then you put half of this peony in that tea. So you drink the tea and then you have a little spoon and you eat peonies from it. <laughs> Siddhartha says... I just have no option but to head to India or Pakistan food place soon. I can't take it any longer. Yep, these are very good foods. So Mary says that peas and potatoes in your samosa. So let's see. I think my samosa had, yes. Yeah, so if you see, it had veg, vegetables in it. So there are two types of samosas, either meat in it, like a meat pocket or vegetable. This was vegetable samosa. So yes, potatoes and peas and um, yeah, m mashed potatoes. Yes, no, not pakoras. So pakora is a different thing. I didn't have pakoras. <laughs> GI says, <laughs> I'm so hungry now. Yes, I became very hungry as well. That is why I gained so much weight. <laughs> so this was... Uh, pakoda, uh, samosa, then this is paratha. So somebody was bringing up, it looks like paratha. So when I came back home, uh, my mother-in-law, she made me this paratha with, this is called halim. Halim is uh, uh, lentils that are crushed and ground to kind of powder and then cooked with meat. So this was, the halim that we get here is kind of, useless haleem. That is really dal and meat. Actual haleem is made with crushed lentils to a fine powder. And then you have crushed meat and then you have chunks of meat. That is what is a real haleem. So this was haleem. This is halwa puri. So this is a place, a restaurant near my place which serves halwa puri in the morning. So I was going to, where was I going? I think I was going to Multan. And on the way, I stopped over for halwa puri before I went for, going to Multan was six hours, I believe, or seven hours of travel. So just before going there, I stopped and I had uh, halwa puri. So if you see here, these are halwa puris. This is a meat pocket. So this was uh, ground meat with that little, you know, pancake around it. This was brain masala. So I ate that. So then we went our, our way to Multan. So this was now on the other direction, going to Multan Medical College side or Nishtar Medical College. These were the... Um, so this was just like over here on the, we have those, uh, uh, you know, rest areas or the areas where there is food and fuel. So these are those rest areas. This was the motorway to Multan. 
this was on the way back. So I had rented a, a car, Toyota Prado, which is a big Jeep, like GMCs over here, smaller than that. So this was, I, I took a picture of the sunset behind us. And this is how the evening started looking when I was coming back from Multan. So this is Dr. Bean team. So my team, drbean.com, there are doctors here in the U.S. There are support people and video editors here in the U.S. Then <coughs> I think there are three or four engineers in India. And then there are engineers and doctors in Pakistan. So here... This is me. And we were sitting in one of the most expensive uh, restaurants in Lahore. And it, interestingly, they had their kitchen open. So you could actually see how they're cooking. This whole thing was a kitchen. So this is me. <coughs> Excuse me. This is Umair, our director of engineering. This is Dr. Uh, Asjad. He is writing questions for medicine, actually a very good doctor. He has just done USMLE as well. So I think in another two, three months, he'll be coming here to practice. This is Dr. Ehan. He is working on anatomy with us. She is his fiance, Aliza. So she is my executive assistant too. So she works for us as well. He works too. And this is uh, Umar. He works with our SEO and the user comments and so on. So this was our team. There was one Dr. Beanish who was missing. So this was a team in, in Pakistan. This was the food that we were, we had ordered. So here, these are naans. This was a platter of mixed kebabs. And then there were maghas and other things in these little dishes. Yes, will do. Lernan says, very nice seeing you. Alexa, turn on the living room. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I need to give my voice rest. Okay, so then these were also some gifts that I got. So the bouquet and this gulahma, this had... Uh, unstitched cloth in it. And this is what my mother-in-law gave me. So when I went there to meet her, she showed me, she was holding on to this picture. This is me in fourth year <laughs> medicine. I was not a doctor yet. This is my wife. And actually this is final year, fifth year. <coughs> and this is our first son, Hassan. So she said, hey, I have your picture. So I took a picture of the picture. So then one day I took a break, total break, no teaching, no Dr. Bean, nothing. I just took a break. I did not meet anyone. I just sat down in a room and... Um, I love poetry, so I, I wrote poetry that day. So this is, <laughs> this is the Pakistan's little tour. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Zizi. <laughs> Pete, that is correct. Dollars are in high demand in Pakistan. John says, so nice to have you back. Thank you very much. So nice to be back. It is so much fun that when you come back and in uh, in the at the airport, you land there and at the immigration, you say, here is my U.S. passport. I'm coming back. They say, where are you coming back from? You say, I'm coming back from Pakistan. And then they say, welcome home. And it just sounds so good. So flight. 
<coughs> I use Turkish Air and uh, I usually go by Emirates. Excuse me. I usually use Emirates, but I use Turkish and it was from Lahore to Istanbul, six and a half hours, then two hours layover. Then from Istanbul to San Francisco, 16 hours. It was a really long flight. It was a long flight. <laughs> I could feel it. Sigrid says, thank you. You're very welcome. Very welcome. So this is what happened. So JH says, can you write it for us in Roman script on Twitter somewhere, please? Uh, JH, uh, write what? Sorry, you missed. Gul Ahmad? So Ground says, I hope Pakistan does not have starvation this year. So there is a population of Pakistan that lives below the poverty line. And so they starve. And then, as you can see from the pictures, majority of Pakistan is well off. It is interesting that people do not give a lot of taxes. So the government is poor. The population is rich. Yeah, that, that was a long <laughs> flight. I was... Okay, so Jay says your poem. Absolutely. These poems... Um, it is interesting that I wrote these poems and then I... Or ghazals. And then I posted them on WhatsApp statuses and they became so popular very quickly. <laughs> so I'll see if I can write it in Roman <laughs> letters and put it up. So Mean Bean says, did you miss Luffy? Yes. And Luffy missed me as well. I forgot to show you the pictures of my cats. So they were... As soon as I came back, they just huddled and, uh, you know, on my bed and here on this chair, on that chair. Sigrid says, uh, please translate your poem if it's not private. It's not private. It's just, um, I hope I don't waste your time because translation usually does not do justice to the expression. But... Um, <clears throat> it is a ghazal. So ghazal's basic... Um, basic expression is to talk with a beautiful to talk with a beautiful women is called ghazal so most of this time ghazal is directed towards a beloved someone you love a, a, a woman so saba se keh do ke hum aaye hain wafa ke liye ye pyam le jaye mere mehboob ki raza ke liye so this first do it or couplet, is that tell the, the wind that I have a message of love and please carry it to my beloved and deliver it to them. The second couplet is, Hum isko mil bhi chuke hain kai zindagiyan hui, usse keh do ke jaye hume paane ki dua ke liye. She doesn't know that I'm already hers. And because she doesn't know, she does not even, even look to have me. So tell her to pray that I'll that she can find me because I'm already hers. Then Kapse Bekarar Pirti hai Khushbu ko khokar kisi shok pool se kehdo ke kile saba ke liye. So the this is a very common um, character in Urdu, Ghazal, that is Sabah. Sabah is the air. So this couplet is that the air 
or the wind is anxious because it has lost the fragrance it carries. So in the Urdu ghazal, we say that wind or air carries fragrance and brings those messages of fragrance to people. So the wind, the air has lost the fragrance and so it is very anxious. So tell flowers to bloom so that it can capture fragrance from them and carry that around. कल हमें जो ठुकराते रहे एक इंसान के लिए आज मांग रहे हैं हमी को हमसे खुदा के लिए सो द पीपल हु हेटेड ऑन मी और रिजेक्टेड मी फॉर द मटेरियलिस्टिक वर्ल्ड सो आई कम फ्रॉम अ पुअर बैकग्राउंड सो व्हेन यू आर पुअर पीपल बिहेव डिफरेंटली एंड इफ यू बिकम रिच देन द सेम पीपल बिहेव डिफरेंटली so that is what i'm discussing here that there were people who used to not even like to be with me or or accept me amongst themselves nowadays the same people are looking to sit down with me and and asking me for god's sake come sit down with us mubeen ab waqt e anjam e wafa a bhi chuka hai अब मुनासिब है कि तू तैयार हो जाए सजा के लिए सो मुबीन दिस इज आल्सो ए स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द उर्दू गजल दैट इन दी लास्ट कपलेट यू पुट योर नेम इन देयर सो दिस इज काइंड ऑफ द ऑथर्स नेम सो एम सेइंग दैट आई हैव लव्ड समवन फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम and there is always one outcome of loving someone and that is you get you get dejected or deceived or rejected so i'm saying that hey mubeen you have been loving some someone for a long time so that means it should be time about time for you to be punished for that as well so get ready so this was this poem but i wrote six of them <laughs> सिद्धार्था से इस वाह क्या बात है थैंक यू वेरी मच से यू सच अ रोमांटिक डॉक्टर बीन एंड सो डीप दैट वाज जस्ट ब्यूटीफुल थैंक यू फॉर यू आर वेरी वेलकम गजल इज सपोज टू बी रोमांटिक इट इज सपोज टू बी डायरेक्टेड एट ए बिलव बिलव एड नेवर फैक्ट डॉक्टर मुबीन टू बी द रोमांटिक टाइप <laughs> this is a surprise to all cool beans yeah i love to do poetry and in the poetry this is the this is the expectation from ghazal to be this way so ms is compassion art poetry culinary delights and healing lovely chit chat absolutely alive in heal says is this medicine my dad used to sing his ghazals uh this is my ghazal uh, rima very romantic thank you not wasted time thank you i had another ghazal which i really even when i had written it i really loved it that ghazal was let me see if i can find it this one this ghazal was tere baam ka chirag nahi tera baam hu main mujhe tu benaam samajhti hai tera naam hu main so in the pakistani culture during the evenings in the older times there used to be no electricity so what people would do is they will put little um, oil lamps on their um, on their walls so let me show you something this is actually a very interesting structure that is used in urdu poetry so what happens is if i say um village in pakistan so 
So, so if I, if you look at this picture, at night what happens is as there is no electricity and the farmers are still outside, what women do is they put little oil lamps on these walls so that when the when the men come back they know where to go and these walls are the guide for them in a way so these walls so of course we carried over these expression to the um, cities as well so this this wall is called bam in urdu or in hindi as well so this sheer was tere bam ka. so people used to put those little oil lamps there and these are called charag and charag and the bam has a very romantic um place in urdu poetry because it is a woman who is waiting for her man to come back from agricultural lands in the evening and that charag or lamp is kind of a guide light so, <coughs> so sometimes something that you really like is said to be that charag so i i was saying that tere baam ka charag nahi tera baam hu main mujhe tu benaam samajhti hai tera naam hu main that i am not the guide light sitting on a on a wall i am the actual wall itself meaning i'm everything not just one little thing and you think i have no name and again the, these expressions of mine they come from my origin that i was from a poorer family so were nameless so you think i have no name but your name is me so something like that so dk says have you ever visited india no i had a visa for india but uh, i could not visit rita rita says charag in lamp is lamp in armenian as well very good so charag has a beautiful um, place in urdu literature alive in here rima says i love that you tapped into this nostalgic side a huge a hug from home thank you very much yeah this is after so many years i had gone to pakistan in 2002 february but at that time remember the pandemic was starting there was so much scare so i went there and i just came back so i went there now 3 years later paul wolf says imran khan is in the wadi yes imran khan is doing really good they are it almost seems like they're going to kill him zizi berman says we are all the same despite monetary status correct so <clears throat> this is the <laughs> rima says now can you sing it please rima i have no clue how to sing i'm very bad at singing i can speak the ghazal in the way the ghazal's rhythms are like tere baam ka charag nahi tera baam hu main mujhe tu benaam samajhti hai tera naam hu main wo jis haseen sham ki khuda se tu ne duaein ki teri hasti e purkaf ki wo haseen sham hu main so i can speak like that but no i can't sing so <clears throat> he's doing really good but you saw that they have toppled him already and now they are is it's not good for him but that's what pakistan has always done to its it's yeah. there's so many influences there people says would you write back in us as well or only such inspiration while being no i write here as well So in the last two three years, I've been writing. I think I've written forty fifty ghazals. It is interesting that I never published them. So this time when I posted them, my student said, "Hey, we we want to make a book and we want to publish that. So I might publish it."
Mary says that you do have a very pleasing speaking voice. <laughs> you charmer. Thank you. Guy says, you must have missed the cool beans considering it's 10.30, almost longest show yet. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And that tells me, yes, it is 10.30 in the East Coast. Alive in Heels, Rima says, you should talk your book. That's a good idea. I should actually talk it. <laughs> you are a lot of Nihari from me, right? Yes, I had to bring it, but I ate it <laughs> because I couldn't bring it. Jean says, be still my heart when you read your poetry in your native tongue. So very moving. Thank you very much. I love Urdu poetry, especially Ghazal. And um, I have always been a fan of Ghazals. Meeple Art says that your poetry would work very, very well with your digital landscape painting. Correct. <laughs> Rita says that ghazal has the same meaning in Arabic. Correct. So the word ghazal is actually taken from Arabic. It means the same thing in Arabic as well, speaking with the with a beautiful woman. And even the structure of these couplets and the what we say radif and kafia or the structure of the ghazal is also borrowed from Arabic. The words are not Arabic, so they are some of them are Arabic, some are Persian, some are Urdu, some are Hindi. So Urdu has kind of picked up words from all languages. And so it has that mixture. JS says Urdu is so beautiful. Yes, I love Urdu. Lord Azel says, wonderful tour of Pakistan. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Poetry and recipes. Yes. <laughs> Jackie says, my Alexa just said living room doesn't support that. She was answering you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Urdu is a beautiful language. Absolutely. And it um, it is such a, yes, it's a beautiful language, very melodious. And uh, I, what I like is that some expressions that you cannot say in Nasr, Nasr is the prose, you can put them in Ghazal and still say, for example, the romantic poetry that I do, if I say that in prose, I would look like someone who is hitting on others. But if you put that in Ghazal, then Ghazal can carry the weight of such expression. Thank you. So with this, yes, absolutely, hit the like button. And we would start our uh, um, our discussions from tomorrow. I'm going to take some days to figure out what are the things that topics that are more important now. So if there is a suggestion, <coughs> please let me know. In the meantime, whatever I felt was important, I'll start from there. <laughs> Savage says, you don't look like you gained weight to me. This is awesome. I, <laughs> I gained weight. So I have to really, really shed that weight. So with this, thank you very much. Thank you for the tour with me. And uh, thank you for your support, for your love. And I think this is an important mission, the long COVID and vaccine injury. And we'll go from there. So thank you. Have a good night. I would see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.